Need more help? Give us a call right now at 866-945-8070. We'll get online with you, log in remotely, and record the session so you can review it as often as you like afterwards. How to use QuickBooks Online to split a transaction by location. If you uh, happen to have uh, been over at SethDavid.com and happen to have gone through all of the content I have here on using QuickBooks Online for real estate agents and brokers, uh, and particularly if you went through the webinar that I have here, it's, uh, if I remember correctly, about a three-hour webinar over here on real estate. Uh, you'll, you may have noticed that I suggested using locations to track things by property. And it works really well, but one of the limitations, as you also would have noticed, is as follows. If I go to create an expense, for example, and let's say this expense is for a particular property, I only get to choose one property within a single transaction. So what if I wrote a check that was really based on an expense that needs to get split among several properties? There's no way to do that. There's no way to split the transaction by property. However, there is a way to do it. There's just not a way to do it directly in the transaction. And that's what I'm about to show you here. Here's what you'll do. Initially, Leave the property blank or create a property called company. This would be for any non-property related things or for that matter, anything that you wouldn't want associated with a property. And at this particular point, we, we don't want it associated. So let's say we're paying for insurance that needs to get split up amongst all the properties, right? So for now, we're going to post it to a clearing account. Right now, a clearing account, mind you, is, is just like it sounds. It's an account uh, whose function is to zero out so before you use this in a transaction, I always like to go to the chart of accounts and just ensure that it is in fact zero right now so that there's no question about what's going to be in there. So let's go, uh, it, it, sure enough, from the chart of accounts, we can confirm there's no balance in there. The other thing we'll do is we'll just run the balance sheet real quick because obviously the absence of it on the balance sheet also confirms that there's nothing in there. And notice right now we have a brand new company uh, with $500,000 in the bank starting on the books and it's all associated with the company. So now we know we can put this in the clearing and it'll be clean. This will be the only thing that actually shows up in the clearing account. So we put it to the clearing. Let's say the insurance costs us $1,200. And we're going to need to split that evenly amongst all the properties. So initially we just book this payment to the insurance company through the clearing account. Save and close. Yes. And now that that's done, notice we had the four nine, the 500000 is now reduced for the 1200 It's sitting in the clearing. Now we're going to take it out of the clearing and we're going to distribute it amongst the properties. So how do we do that? We're going to do that with a journal entry. And because this is what I've noticed, in a journal entry, I can actually go line by line and describe the property. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take it out of the clearing. That's going to be a credit of 1200 to the clearing account. And that goes against the company. And now let's fill in the properties. So we need it equally distributed between 123 Birdbank Street, 213 Main Street, and 777 Pennsylvania Avenue. Now this is going to go to the insurance expense account, right? Let's copy that down. And sorry, I went too fast there. Okay, and unfortunately, as I add these accounts in, it resets the property for some reason. Not sure why it does that, but let's fix them. Perfect, and now we just need 400 on each of them. Obviously, you would split this in exactly whatever manner it needs to be split. It's not always going to be exactly even. Point being, I can run it through the clearing, pull it out of the clearing, and then distribute it however I need to amongst the properties. And if you're also using your customer list to describe your properties, then you can associate the names here as well. And so this is going to get it onto the P&L by uh, property. So let's see what this looks like. Save and close. I'll say yes. Now notice on the balance sheet, it splits it up because now I have expenses flowing over to net income flowing over to the balance sheet, right? But let's run our profit and loss by property. So we'll start with the recommended profit and loss. Let's run it for this year. And let's total by properties. 
and run report and boom there it is now I have my insurance expenses described exactly by property that my friends is how you use QuickBooks online to split a transaction by location. As always, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, feedback, reach out to me. You know how to reach me, Seth at nerdenterprises.com, Seth at SethDavid.com. Use one of the luxurious forms that we've provided to you on all of our websites. Wherever you see a contact us link, you'll see a form you can fill out and send us your name, email, and information about whatever it is that you have questions about. And of course, we're available for training and for consulting but for hire so that we can either help you or do it for you. As always, I hope you had some fun and learned something along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web. Need more help? Give us a call right now at 866-945-8070. We'll get online with you, log in remotely, and record the session so you can review it as often as you like afterwards.